This black stuff is the fog of ignorance about mathematics, the science of numbers and their relations, structures and regularities. Mathematicians have been mining this intellectual landscape for thousands of years, revealing knowledge beneath the black fog. At the outer fringes of knowledge, there are now explorers pushing the boundaries on topics that are so arcane, they are unintelligible to people outside their profession. However, the landscape is messy and complex, and flecks of the black fog remain close enough to the center so that mathematically interested amateurs can appreciate them. These are not necessarily wholly unknown areas, but can also be grey zones where something familiar is looked at from an unusual angle and thus illuminating further previously unknown regularities. An example of that would be the circle constant pi, which has been defined as the ratio of a circumference of a circle and its diameter. Pi has been known since antiquity, but only in 2001 it was pointed out that it would be much more consistent to use the ratio of, um, of circumference to radius, with a proposal to call this tau, where tau is 2 pi. In Carl Sagan's book Contact, pi is used in communication with aliens as a marker for intelligence. If we sent pi to aliens, they would wonder why we were sending tau over 2. I have to add a disclaimer at this stage. I like to watch ED YouTube videos by number file, mythologer, three blue, one brown and others. My videos are not meant for teaching, but merely point out possible grey and black zones that merit reinvestigation, and I might be quite wrong. Today we talk about ellipses. Really quick intro first. The points of a constant distance around a focal point called center make a circle. The points of an average distance around two focal points make an ellipse. Of course you can make more general cases, for example by adding more focal points. When we said average distance, we calculate this Cartesian distance using Pythagoras. We could, of course, use different distance measures, for example by varying the exponent n in this equation. A really brief diversion. In Seriot's toy, in Stockholm, the city planners needed a shape. A square square would be too square, a round square too round. The mathematician Pete Hein devised a super ellipse, or Lamé curve, with exponent 2.5. Here it is in Google Maps. Also, iPhone icons are super ellipses. But so far, nothing new. Now, last week I watched a YouTube video by Matt Parker where he pointed out something that I found amazing. Here's a circle with radius r and an ellipse with major and minor semi-axis a and b. The area of the circle is pi r squared. The area of the ellipse is pi a b. The circumference of the circle is 2 pi r or tau r. The circumference of the ellipse is, wait for it, blurb. This cannot be expressed any simpler than with an infinite series. Now then Matt pointed out that pi is also defined as an infinite series. And this made me think, maybe in the context of ellipses it would be better to look at pi and tau as functions rather than constants. Uh, to keep it simple, let's only look at ellipses with major semi-axis 1. That means you know, also circles with radius 1. The minor axis is then the aspect ratio a. If we want anything bigger, we can just scale it up with a factor r. So tau depends on the aspect ratio a, we said. So aspect ratio 1 means circle, so tau of 1 is 6.2 and similarly pi of 1 is 3.14 as normal. As a approaches 0 and the ellipse gets more and more squashed, the uh, uh, value for tau tends towards 4, and it's easy to see why. When you look at the um, these red lines there, they make a sort of squashed diamond. And here's a plot of tau of A against A, and you can see it goes up from uh, 4 to 2 pi. So now we have a much more pleasing formula for the circumference, and we moved all the infinite complexities into the constant where they belong. To scrub away at another grey zone, let's think about trigonometric functions for ellipses. 
but points on a circle are defined by sine cos tan. For a hyperbola, there are the functions shine, cos, and than that you might remember. So for an ellipse, can we have sine, cosy, and tan, all depending on the aspect ratio, of course. For this to be interesting, we need to redefine the trigonometric functions to work on arcs rather than the angles. If we use angles, then the ellipses are just squashed circles defined by stretched and squashed sine and cos rather than their own distinct trig functions. For circles, we get an easy conversion function, so people generally consider radian as an angle measure rather than a distance measure, the arc around a unit circle. For ellipses, the relationship between angles and arc distance d is not linear. So here we plot sine e and cosy for aspect ratio 1 and get the familiar sine and cos curves. Remember the x-axis is the arc length, not the angle. Here's the same for an ellipse of aspect ratio 1 half. So you can see that cosy curve only goes up to the aspect ratio. Um, and the shape is not at all like sine and cos. Here's sine e and cosy for aspect ratio one quarter. There are loads of identities for trig functions and many pleasing symmetries with the hyperbolic equivalence. Now, are there interesting identities for elliptical trig functions? I don't know. Has this area been explored or is this one of the gray areas on our map of knowledge?